before I died. My wife told me that all these years, the one she truly loved was my brother. The reason, my brother had donated a kidney to her. So after being reborn, I avoided my wife like the plague and married the pretentious coquette she had mentioned in my previous life. Filled with regret, she knelt before me, begging for forgiveness. I chuckled softly and said, I won't be donating a kidney to you this time. Chapter 1 When I opened my eyes, I found myself reborn in my second year of university. I hadn't even gathered my thoughts when my phone buzzed with a message from Elise. After school tonight, can you help me get David to go see a movie? I frowned. Elise was my wife in my previous life, and I had always believed we had many years of love as a married couple. But just before I died, she told me that the one she truly loved all along was my brother. I can't. I have things to do. Figure it out yourself. I replied. I had no desire to get involved with her anymore. Since fate had granted me a second chance, this time, I would live for myself. Chapter 2 once I had calmed down, I looked around the classroom. The faces were mostly unfamiliar, except for Emily, who sat beside me. In my previous life, I remembered that on the first day of school, I had helped Emily fend off two guys who were bothering her, and I also helped carry her luggage to the dorm. Since then, we had a good relationship. She was a sweet girl. Since we were in the same class, she often brought me breakfast, saved me a seat, and occasionally invited me to study together at the library. But Elise had always disliked Emily. She had told me many times that Emily was a pretentious coquette, always putting on a show, and urged me to stay away from her. In my last life, I had listened to Elise because I liked her. When I ignored Emily's invitations to the library a few times, she eventually stopped contacting me. Emily, how about I treat you to dinner tonight? I felt a bit guilty. She had been nothing but kind, a genuinely good girl. Ah, she was surprised, her mouth slightly agape. Really? Why the sudden invitation? I smiled, no particular reason, just in a good mood and felt like celebrating. Okay, she agreed, her face lighting up with happiness, her cheeks turning a slight shade of pink. That evening, I took Emily to a Japanese restaurant near the university. While we ate, Emily asked, Gabriel, are you planning to take the graduate school entrance exam? In my last life, I gave up on the idea of further studies for Elise, and it was one of my biggest regrets. So without hesitation, I replied, yes. I want to get into Shanghai University. Emily's eyes sparkled with surprise. Me too. I want to go to Shanghai University as well. We can prepare together and keep each other on track. Sounds great, I said, genuinely excited. At that moment, Elise and my brother walked into the restaurant. When Elise saw me with Emily, she frowned deeply. She quickly strode over to us. Gabriel, is this what you meant by having plans? Your plan was to have dinner with her, she said, her tone sharp. When I used to like Elise, everything about her seemed charming. Even her somewhat spoiled personality. I had thought it was cute, but now that I didn't like her anymore, her aggressive tone irritated me. So what if it is? Weren't you planning to go watch a movie with my brother? I'm not interfering with your plans. Why can't I have dinner with a friend? I shot back, my tone just as harsh. Elise looked at me, wide-eyed, as if she couldn't believe I would talk to her like that. I didn't care. After speaking, I grabbed Emily's hand and walked out since we had already finished eating. Brother, Emily and I are heading out now. As soon as we stepped outside, my brother chased after us, Gabe, my brother said, clearly anxious, why did you talk to Elise like that, don't you like her, go make things right, my brother was always the gentle type, constantly trying to bring Elise and me together, brother, I said, meeting his gaze, Elise has always liked you, besides, I don't like her anymore, I pulled Emily in front of me, I like Emily now, so I won't be involved with Elise anymore, Gabe, before my brother could respond, Elise came storming out, she lifted her chin and stared at me, clearly waiting for me to apologize. Chapter 3 I ignored her and walked back to school with Emily. Along the way, Emily kept her head down, not saying a word, feeling a bit guilty. I tried to explain. Emily, I'm sorry for using you as a shield earlier. She spoke slowly. Gabriel, you said you don't like Elise anymore. Is that true? It's true. I nodded firmly. I will never like her again, and the further I stay away from her, the better. Then, she gathered her courage, lifted her head to look at me her pale face turning red, can I like you? I froze for a moment, looking at Emily. Emily was very pretty, with a delicate, quiet beauty. She was petite, with a small frame and a gentle, soft demeanor that made you want to protect her. Had she always liked me, if I had distanced myself from her in the past life, was she heartbroken? Thinking about this, I patted her head reassuringly. Of course you can, Emmy. You're a wonderful girl, and it's an honor to be liked by you, but, I said seriously, I still need some time to sort out my feelings. Can you wait for me? Yes. She nodded eagerly, then shyly lowered her head again. She was simply too adorable. I didn't expect that a week later, Elise would suddenly come looking for me, 
Her expression completely different from before. She was anxious and desperate to pull me out of class. Gabriel, come out. We need to talk. The classroom was full of people. And everyone was watching us. I had no choice but to step outside. What do you want? I asked with a blank expression. I. I need to talk to you. She seemed stuck. Unable to get the words out. If you have nothing important to say, I'm going back. Don't come to my classroom anymore. It's not appropriate. I said coldly and turned to leave. Gabriel. Elise called after me. Do you want to be with me? Huh? I thought I must have misheard. What did Elise just say? Seeing my confusion, Elise repeated. You've always liked me, haven't you? Let's be together. I didn't know what was going through her mind, but I replied coldly. Yes, I liked you before, but I don't anymore. Haven't you always liked my brother? Why are you looking for me instead of him? Are you trying to use me to get closer to him again? I'm not. I, I'm not getting together with you, Elise. Let's just pretend we never knew each other. Don't even greet me when we meet. With that, I turned and went back to class. Elise stayed where she was, her head hanging low, lost in thought. But for some reason, after that, I kept running into her everywhere, at the cafeteria, the supermarket, even outside the boys' dormitory. It was driving me crazy. Finally, I couldn't hold back anymore and pulled her aside. Enough, I've already told you. I don't like you anymore. You like my brother. Go after him. Why are you bothering me? Gabriel. Elise's eyes were full of curiosity. Did you come back too? What? Could it be that Elise had been reborn as well? I was shocked inside but kept a calm face. I don't know what you're talking about. Just stay away from me. Hearing that I didn't admit anything, Elise visibly relaxed. Chapter 4. Oh, right. I suddenly remembered. I'm not paying your rent anymore. If you want to keep living there, pay for it yourself. Shortly after we started college, Elise had told me she didn't get along with her roommates and that they were excluding her. So. I spent 1,500 yuan every month to rent a studio apartment for her off campus. Although my family wasn't poor, I only got 3,000 yuan a month for living expenses, and I spent more than half of it on her. Sometimes, I even had to ask my parents for more money. Elise froze in place. I knew she only got 1,800 yuan a month in living expenses. While it was enough to get by, it definitely wouldn't cover the rent. Gabriel, how can you treat me like this? Elise's voice became sharp when she heard what I said, and why shouldn't I treat you like this? I said, annoyed, before, when I liked you, I was willing to spend money on you even if you didn't care, but now that I don't like you anymore, I don't want to spend a single cent on you, understand? Elisa's eyes filled with tears, after holding them back for a moment, she angrily said, Gabriel, you'll regret treating me this way, regret, I would never regret it, in my past life, after we got married, I took care of all the housework and paid for everything, but when I got sick because I only had one kidney, Elise never came to see me, not even once. It wasn't until I was on my deathbed that she told me she had always loved my brother. She could have kept that from me, but she chose to let me die knowing the truth, making me feel like my decades of devotion were a joke, and I died with no peace of mind. I guess she hated me for binding her to a loveless marriage for over a decade, hated me so much that she didn't even want to let me die peacefully. How ironic. In my last life, I treated her so well, yet all I ever saw from her were cold expressions or commands given with an air of superiority. But in this life, after just a few harsh words from me, she was suddenly showing all sorts of emotions in front of me. None of it mattered to me anymore. Just then, my brother called. Gabe, mom and dad just called me. They said Elise's father had a stroke and is in the hospital. He needs someone to take care of him. I remembered that this had happened in my past life as well. Back then, both my brother and I were worried about Elise. So we didn't tell her. I took a two-week leave from school to care for her father. Thinking about Elisa's parents filled me with anger. Those two always thought I was her simp. No matter how well I treated them, they never showed me any respect. In my previous life, I spent a fortune on gifts for Elisa's parents during every holiday. Yet they always turned up their noses, complaining that the gifts weren't valuable enough. But all my money was spent on Elise. I wasn't some rich heir. By middle age, I hadn't saved a penny. And when I got sick, my parents had to pay my hospital bills. With that in mind, I said each word clearly to my brother. Brother. If Elise's father is sick, let her mother call her. We don't need to worry about it. But, no buts, brother. I've told you, I don't like her anymore. I knew my brother had always treated Elise like a little sister and, since I liked her, he took care of her as well. When Elise heard me mention her, she quickly looked over. Your father had a stroke. I told her bluntly. She seemed to just remember and, without saying anything, hurriedly turned to leave. In my past life, by the time she found out, her father had already been discharged from the hospital. She suddenly stopped, turned back, and bit her lip before saying, Gabriel, come home with me. No, I refused firmly. Her eyes flashed with disappointment and confusion, but
but she turned and left. Chapter 5. For the next half month, Elise didn't appear in my life again. She only called once to borrow money, but I refused. I also called my brother, telling him not to lend her money either. My brother didn't understand why I suddenly became so heartless towards Elise, but he reluctantly agreed, as I was still his biological brother. During that half month, I was quite happy. I readjusted to university life and resumed my studies. I went out with Emily again. We played a role-playing mystery game and watched a movie together. I was completely drawn in by Emily's gentleness and her inner strength. Finally, when Emily gathered the courage to confess to me for the second time, I smiled and playfully tapped her nose. Silly girl. Confessions are supposed to be made by the guy. She stubbornly looked up at me. I cleared my throat. Miss Emily, I like you. Would you be willing to be with me? I'm willing, she said, beaming with joy. I was just as happy. It turns out my affection wasn't worthless after all. And such a lovely girl cherished it like a treasure. Emmy, thank you. Emily tilted her head slightly, seemingly unsure of what I was thanking her for. Thank you for liking me. I smiled gently at her. I'll definitely treat you well. More than half a month later, Elise reappeared, looking much more worn out. I ran into her in front of the girl's dormitory, and she rushed over to apologize. Gabriel, I'm sorry. I now realize how much you've done for me. She looked exhausted, probably from taking care of her father. In my previous life, after I took care of her father until he was discharged, she had come to me, casually saying, thanks, even that had made me happy for half a day. Thinking back, I couldn't help but feel embarrassed for my former self. I don't know what you're talking about. I replied coldly. At that moment, Emily came down from the dormitory, all packed up and ready to go. Seeing Elise and me together, she seemed a little nervous. I smiled, took Emily's hand, handed her a cup of milk tea, and walked past Elise without looking back. Gabriel, Elise suddenly yelled, are you refusing to be with me just because of her? I've told you before, that girl is just a pretentious coquette. Elise shouted loudly. Everyone around us began to stare, pointing at us. Emily, flustered and red with anger, said, why? Why are you slandering me? Elise sneered at her. Isn't seducing someone else's husband the definition of a pretentious coquette? Chapter 6. Her words left everyone around us stunned. Elise, I yelled, standing in front of Emily to shield her. Since when was I your husband? I don't like you. Can't you understand plain words? How dare you say that about my girlfriend? Gabriel, you're scolding me over that pretentious coquette. Elise cried as she ran off. Emily's eyes were red, but she held back her tears. Any girl would feel hurt if she were insulted like that. If rumors spread, people would point fingers at her wherever she went. Everyone. I raised my voice, addressing the crowd still lingering. That girl you just saw is only a neighbor. We grew up together, but there's nothing more between us. She likes my brother. I don't know what's gotten into her today, but I won't accept her slandering my girlfriend. I cupped my hands and gave a slight bow to the onlookers. I hope you won't spread rumors. Being with my girlfriend is my good fortune, and I don't want her hurt by any gossip. All right, bro. With those words, I believe you're not the kind of guy who would abandon someone, said another guy who was waiting for his girlfriend outside the dorm. Emily, touched, tugged on my hand, lowering her head shyly under the gaze of the others. I thought this matter was over, but that very night, Elise posted on the university forum. She named Emily from the class of 19, accusing her of stealing someone else's boyfriend. She even uploaded a bunch of photos of us from when we were younger. In the photos, my brother was cropped out, leaving just the two of us. There were pictures of us shopping, watching movies, eating out, and going to amusement parks. Anyone looking at them would assume we were a couple. Students, always eager for gossip, quickly blew up the post. In less than two hours, it became the top thread. Filled with comments insulting Emily and me, she's a pretentious coquette, right, seducing someone else's boyfriend, scumbag guy, shameless girl, trash couples deserve each other, Emily called me, nearly in tears, what do we do, Gabriel, did you ever date her, Emmy, don't worry, I comforted her gently, I've never dated Elise, not before, and I won't in the future either, do you trust me, if you do, leave this to me, I trust you, Emily sniffled on the other end of the line, I hung up the phone, my expression colder than ice. Elise, I didn't want to have anything to do with you after being reborn. I was willing to let the past stay in the past. But since you keep provoking me and using such dirty tricks, don't blame me for being ruthless. Chapter 7. I told Emily to stay indoors for a couple of days and silently waited for the situation to escalate. Once the post had gained enough attention and comments, I took screenshots and saved them. Then, I compiled all the original photos and edited a detailed account of my history with Elise from childhood. I even included screenshots of messages I had sent her that she barely responded to. I packed everything up and posted my own thread. Due to the popularity of Elise's original post, mine quickly gained attention as well. Wow. 
The tables have turned, folks. So there was another person in the pictures. It's clear that this Elise girl was much closer to the other guy. She cropped him out and posted these pictures. That's so manipulative. Why would someone do that? When someone likes you, you ignore them. But when they move on, you smear their new partner. Princess of the dating world. Loves keeping people hanging. This is scary. Classic competitive female behavior. I apologize to Miss Emily. Yesterday I spoke too harshly. I'm sorry. Sorry. Add me to the apology list. Gabriel. Thank you. Emily called to thank me again. Don't thank me yet. Emmy. I sent her the screenshots. Call the police and report her for defamation. Ah. Isn't that a bit extreme? After all. She's your childhood friend. Emily was surprised. Emmy. I said seriously. I won't let her hurt you like this. Okay. Not long after. Elise was escorted out of class by a few police officers for a conversation. When the three of us met at the police station, Elise finally realized what had happened. You called the police. She glared at Emily. I was the one who reported you. Elise. You did something wrong. Do you really expect no one to fight back? I said sarcastically. Gabriel, you've changed. She mumbled. Miss Elise. The officer interrupted. Based on the evidence we've received, you are charged with defamation and causing social harm. Therefore, you will face the following penalties. You are required to pay Miss Emily 800 yuan for emotional damages, a fine of 500 yuan, and you will be administratively detained for three days. Chapter 8. When Elise heard she would be detained, her face turned pale. She pleaded with the officers, I know I did wrong, but can you not detain me? I'm still a student, and detention will go on my record. If you and the victim can reach a reconciliation through mediation, the detention can be waived, the officer replied. Elise turned to me with pleading eyes. Gabriel, you can't do this to me. I remained expressionless. You didn't hurt me, so talking to me is pointless. After hesitating for a long while, Elise gritted her teeth and finally apologized to Emily. Emily, I'm sorry for what I did. Could you forgive me? I promise it won't happen again. Following my earlier instructions, Emily refused the mediation. You. Elise's anger flared. I need to make a call. Elise told the officer. Making a phone call was a reasonable request, so the police had no reason to deny her. A few minutes later, my dad called me. I picked up the phone with satisfaction. Hello, dad. What's up? What's up? Why are you at the police station with Elise? Dad, you don't know what Elise did. She spread rumors about my girlfriend at school, accusing me of cheating. Now everyone at school knows, and I can't even hold my head up anymore. I exaggerated the situation. When did you get a girlfriend? Never mind. We'll talk about that later. Did things really get that bad? Yeah. My girlfriend and I don't even dare to leave the dorm. That girl. My dad got angrier as he listened. Fine. Sort it out quickly. Old by called me. We can't let Elise get detained by the police, but we'll cut ties with her family from now on. That was exactly what I wanted to hear. From the moment Elise started this mess, I knew that my family had to distance itself from hers, but I couldn't be the one to say it. It had to come from the older generation. In the end, I agreed to mediate but demanded that Elise pay Emily 5,000 yuan in compensation and issue a public apology on the school forum and all her personal social media platforms. Elise's face turned ashen, but she agreed. As we were leaving, Elise grabbed my sleeve, asking to talk privately. I reassured Emily and followed her. Gabriel. Elise started. I know you're only with her to get back at me. But this time, I'm really upset. Break up with her now, and I'll agree to be with you. Stop playing games. Didn't you always like my brother? I was puzzled. If Elise had also been reborn, shouldn't she be trying to get with my brother instead of clinging to me? I. I. She stammered before raising her head abruptly. No. How do you know I liked your brother? I've never told you explicitly before, unless. Elisa's eyes narrowed as she stepped closer, unless you were also reborn, is that it? Chapter 9. Before I could respond, Elise muttered to herself, yes, you must have been reborn too, otherwise, you wouldn't be acting so differently from the last time, then, that means. Her face suddenly turned pale as a realization hit her, that means, what I said, yes, I was reborn, and much earlier than you. I replied with a mocking smile. I remember every word you said before I died. She staggered backward, trying to explain. Gabriel, I didn't mean to, so I won't cling to you anymore. And don't bother clinging to me either. Heaven gave me another chance. And this time, I'm going to find someone who truly loves me. I looked at her deeply and added, if you truly like my brother, go after him. I won't stop you. Rest assured. With that, I walked away, not looking back to see Elise standing there, dazed and on the verge of collapse. For a while after that, I didn't see Elise. I even started to wonder if she had vanished altogether, until June 27th, just before summer break. I was pacing nervously in the classroom. Tomorrow, June 28th, was the day my brother had died in a car accident in the previous life. 
I clenched my fists. This time, I wouldn't let it happen. At midnight on June 28, I knocked on my brother's dormitory door. He was a teacher at a nearby university. Southwest H.E. lived close by. Gabe, what are you doing here so late? Brother, don't ask why. I'm spending the whole day with you today. In the previous life, he had died in a car accident off campus, so I kept an eye on him all day, making sure he didn't leave the university. Finally, by 3 p.m., I breathed a sigh of relief. The time of the accident in the previous life had passed, and it seemed like I had averted the tragedy. Just as I relaxed my guard, a tricycle suddenly came speeding around the corner, heading straight for my brother. There was no time to dodge. My mind went blank. Could fate really not be changed? Chapter 10. Gritting my teeth, I quickly turned and lunged forward, kicking off the ground to push my brother out of the way. At the same time, another figure moved in sync with me, and the three of us tumbled to the ground. My brother hit a rock hard as he fell. Ah, my brother groaned in pain, clutching his leg. Brother, I cried, feeling a wave of frustration. David, I turned and saw that the person who had fallen with us was Elise. It had only been a month since I last saw her, but she looked like she had aged 10 years, and she seemed to have lost a lot of weight. I had no time to deal with her. Grabbing my phone, I dialed for an ambulance. My brother was already sweating from the pain. I regretted it so much. My brother had insisted on going out to teach and I had thought it would be fine as long as he didn't leave the campus. If I had known, I would have made sure he didn't even leave his dorm room. The ambulance arrived quickly, and Elise followed us to the hospital. She clung to my brother's shirt the entire time, muttering under her breath, it can't be, it can't be. In this life, I didn't take your kidney, you won't die. Kidney, I suddenly remembered. In the previous life, about half a month after my brother's car accident, my dad had called me to tell me that Elise had been diagnosed with kidney failure and needed a transplant. I hadn't consulted anyone back then. I had quietly gone to get tested and found out I was a match. I had thought it was fate's way of telling me to save her. In this life, I hadn't donated my kidney. So was Elise now like this because she had been undergoing dialysis all this time. We soon arrived at the hospital. Fortunately, my brother remained conscious. After a thorough examination, I let out a sigh of relief. He had a fractured chin and several bruises, but no life-threatening injuries. He was soon hooked up to a pain relief drip, and as he opened his eyes, he said weakly, thank you, Gabe, I owe you my life, it's nothing, brother, I had a dream a couple of nights ago about you being in a car accident, and I couldn't shake the unease, that's why I've been sticking by you, it seems like it was a prophetic dream, I joked, using it as an excuse, Elise sat on a bench nearby, staring blankly at my brother's medical report, David, David, she shakily reached out, David, why, why do you only have one kidney, chapter 11, I didn't take your kidney, how can you still only have one? Hearing this, I too grabbed my brother's medical report. Did he really have only one kidney? I was born with one kidney smaller than the other. My brother explained weakly. As I grew, the smaller one atrophied. But the remaining kidney is healthy. It doesn't affect my body much. Elise stared blankly at the both of us. Slowly, she crouched down, hugging herself, and began to sob quietly. Her sobs grew louder and louder until she was wailing uncontrollably. I watched coldly, while my brother confused and unsure what was going on, tried to console her, Elise, what's wrong, I'm fine, really, it's just a fracture, I'll heal, my brother assumed she was crying out of concern for him, not knowing that I had told him in the past that Elise liked him, but in reality, I suspected that Elise had just realized that it was me who had donated the kidney in the previous life, after all, once I died in the previous life, the doctors must have explained the cause of my death to her in detail, the illness I suffered in my last life wouldn't have been fatal, but because I had donated a kidney to Elise, I was left with only one. As a result, I couldn't take the normal medications and ultimately lost my life. Elise had likely always harbored suspicions that the kidney she received was actually mine. The reason she hadn't confirmed it earlier was probably that she had seen my brother's medical report when he died in the last life, and she had assumed from the start that the kidney was from him. As Elise cried her heart out, I felt no sympathy for her. Whether it was a tragic misunderstanding or not, the pain Elise had caused me in the previous life was undeniable. If she had shown me even a little concern, she would have noticed that I had been taking the same medication as her all along. But for 15 years after our marriage, all my efforts had failed to warm her heart. Even as I lay dying, she had come to me specifically to tell me that she loved my brother, making sure I died with no peace. As her sobbing intensified, she suddenly rushed over and hugged me tightly. Gabriel, I'm sorry, I didn't know, I really didn't know, I'm so sorry. Chapter 12 she was holding onto me so tightly that I couldn't push her away. I could only say, if you really feel sorry, then don't bother me anymore. My brother, watching from the side, looked completely confused. However, since the pain relief had some anesthetic in it, he soon closed his eyes and fell asleep. 
Gabriel, I'll make it up to you. I'll treat you well in this life. Please don't leave me. Elise sobbed, begging. Please, Gabriel, I can't live without you. After you left in the last life, I realized that you had become such an integral part of my life. You had rooted yourself deeply in every aspect of my existence. I no longer woke up to find breakfast ready. There were no more freshly washed fruits in the fridge. My clothes didn't magically become clean and return to my wardrobe, and the trash at the door stayed there even after opening it multiple times. Elise buried her head deeply into my chest, clutching my shirt, and said in a muffled voice, Gabriel, I never knew the mortgage and car payments were so much every month. I didn't know the car needed maintenance. I didn't know how to pay the water, electricity, and gas bills. I can't live without you, Gabriel. I finally managed to pry her off of me, brushing off my shirt with disdain. You didn't know. There's a lot you don't know. You never put any thought into me. You just saw me as a fool who gave you free money and did all the work. My brother is resting right now. Please leave and stop disturbing him, I said coldly, making it clear she wasn't welcome. When she refused to leave, I grabbed her arm and dragged her out of the room, shutting and locking the door behind her. It wasn't until a long while later that I finally heard her footsteps leaving. I stayed with my brother for two days, and soon after, my parents rushed over because his leg fracture was quite serious and needed surgery. For the next couple of weeks, my parents and I took turns caring for my brother. During that time, Emily visited a few times, bringing flowers and bone broth she had made. My parents and my brother were very pleased with Emily. She was the complete opposite of Elise. Elise had a bright, flamboyant appearance and a bold personality, often dressing provocatively, whereas Emily had a delicate, gentle beauty, and always dressed modestly. On the last day of my brother's hospital stay, Elise's parents suddenly showed up. I was pushing my brother in a wheelchair when her parents rushed over and knelt in front of me. Gabriel, please save Elise, they cried, and they even kowtowed to me. Chapter 13 My parents were shocked, quickly helping Elise's parents up from the ground. What's going on? Old by, why are you and your wife doing this? My dad asked, holding on to Elise's father to stop him from kneeling again. Elise's mother was in tears. Elise. Elise has end-stage acute kidney failure. She's not going to make it. Huh? My dad's eyes widened in shock. How did this happen? If there's anything we can do to help, we will. My head throbbed. I knew my dad's soft heart would melt upon hearing how serious Elise's condition was, and he would forget about all the past grievances. Old ye. Elise said Gabe's tissue type matches hers. Could you, could Gabe donate a kidney to Elise? Her father pleaded. What? My dad was dumbfounded. How could Gabe and Elise have a matching type? He turned to me and asked. Did you get tested? I let out a mocking laugh. Elise who had seemed so remorseful a few days ago, was now sending her parents to ask for my kidney. Clearly, she feared I wouldn't crawl back to her and donate it like in the past. I didn't get tested, I said casually, but I do know that my tissue type matches Elisa's. But, I added with a smirk, I'm not willing to give Elisa kidney. Elisa's father grew agitated. Gabe, you can't be so selfish. You'd only be losing a kidney, but Elise is losing her life. I glanced at him indifferently. What does her life have to do with me? I didn't make her sick. Elisa's mother became desperate, grabbing my arm. Gabe, I know you've always liked our Elise. If you donate your kidney, I'll make sure she marries you. Marry me. I asked mockingly. Does that mean you'll also ask for a house, a car, and a 400,000 yuan dowry? Elisa's mother weakly replied. Well, those are just the basics for marriage, right? Elise isn't healthy, and she'll need money for care. Asking for more isn't unreasonable, is it? What? My mother couldn't take it anymore. You two want my son's kidney, a house a car, and money? How shameless can you be? Get out, my son won't be donating a kidney, and he certainly won't marry a sickly girl. I felt a surge of gratitude toward my mother. In the previous life, after I secretly donated my kidney to Elise, my parents rushed to see me. They had just lost their eldest son, and now their younger son had donated a kidney. It was as if the weight of the world had bent their backs overnight. In the previous life, I had failed my parents the most. Elise's father tried again. Gabriel. Letting you donate a kidney to Elise is doing you a favor. You've followed Elise around like a stray dog all your life. Don't think we didn't know that. You should feel honored that she'll live with your kidney. Hearing this, my dad finally lost his patience. Bai Chen, if you don't know how to speak, then shut up. After all these years, I never thought you'd think of Gabe this way. I've had enough of you and your family. Dad. Mom. Let's not waste any more time on them. Let's go. I said, pushing my brother out the door, unwilling to deal with them any longer. No. You can't leave. What about Elise? Her mother lunged forward, grabbing my leg. You have to give her your kidney. Chapter 14. Let go. I ordered coldly. If you don't, I'll call the police. Don't blame me for not being polite. Hearing that I was going to call the police, Elise's mother hesitated. I took the opportunity to free my leg and quickly left. After the summer break, 
Both Emily and I were about to start our third year of university and needed to begin internships. We found internships at companies close to each other and rented an apartment together. Our days consisted of working and studying for our graduate school exams. In this life, I wasn't planning to return to my hometown. I was determined to stay in the big city and make up for the regrets of my past life. Emily and I kept each other on track, testing and quizzing one another, fully immersed in our studies. About five months later, Elise found me again. This time, she knelt outside my office building and refused to leave, attracting a crowd of curious onlookers. When she saw me coming out after work, a faint light appeared in her eyes. Gabriel. She tried to stand up but collapsed from kneeling too long. Her palms were scraped and bleeding, and dirt covered her hands. Yet, she shakily stood up again and walked toward me. It had been months since I'd last seen her. The once radiant and glamorous Elise was now skin and bones. Her face was sallow. Her hair tied up carelessly like dry straw. And her lips were pale, devoid of any color. Gabriel. Save me. She pleaded desperately. Reaching out. I won't bother you and Emily anymore. Look. I've been so good these past months. Haven't I? I haven't come looking for you. I'm really dying. Please. Save me. The once proud eyes that had never lingered on me for even a moment now clung to me like a drowning fish. Desperate and unwavering, I stopped a short distance from her. Elise, why do you think I would sacrifice my life to save you? No. She shook her head in a panic. If, if we're careful this time, you won't get sick again, you won't die. Her voice grew weaker, as if she didn't even believe her own words. But she kept repeating, as if to convince herself, you won't die. I burst into laughter, tears forming at the corners of my eyes. After a long moment, I straightened up, wiped my tears, and looked at Elise. Don't waste your time on me. You know it's impossible. You'd be better off looking for another kidney donor. Maybe you'll survive that way. With that, I walked past her without a second thought. Seeing Elise in such a pitiful state did bring a sense of satisfaction. But she had already received her punishment. I wouldn't seek further revenge. Chapter 15 In September 2021, I heard that Elise's parents managed to find a kidney donor for her. They had to mortgage their house back home and spent three to four hundred thousand yuan on her treatment. However, the kidney arrived too late. While it saved Elisa's life, her other organs had already suffered significant damage, and her life expectancy likely wasn't very long. I stopped paying attention, focusing entirely on preparing for the exams with Emily. In October, we exchanged a knowing smile as we walked into the exam hall. Afterward, we didn't ask each other how the exam went. Instead, we both took time off from work and went on an exhilarating trip. Hand in hand, we traveled to the seaside, climbed mountains, wandered through towering forests, and roamed endless grasslands. For the first time, I truly experienced the joy of companionship, the happiness of having someone by my side. In the end, hand in hand, we entered the Faxasai temple and knelt before Buddha. With hands clasped together, we prayed sincerely. We prayed for good exam results, for our parents' health, for a bright and clear future, and for our enduring bond, gratitude. In February 2022, just a few days after the new year, I anxiously logged into the exam results portal. I took a deep breath, reminding myself that it would be okay even if I didn't pass. Clicking check results. 389 points. My heart finally settled. Smiling, I turned to my parents, who were eagerly leaning over to see the results. Even though they couldn't quite understand. It's good, I said with a grin. My parents clapped excitedly, and my dad couldn't help but ask, what about Xiaoya? How did she do? Just then, I received a call from Emily. Gabriel. I got 383 points. I got 389. Oh. Emily, usually so gentle, screamed with excitement on the other end of the line, making all of us laugh. When she realized my parents could hear her, she shyly stopped. Chapter 16. In May, after we finished our internships and returned to campus, our counselor invited us to speak at the graduation ceremony as outstanding student representatives. At the same time, we heard that Elise had taken a leave of absence. At the master's graduation ceremony, I got down on one knee and proposed to Emily. Our classmates and teachers offered their most heartfelt congratulations, and we became a special moment in the ceremony. At the end of 2025, Emily and I got married. As we were greeting guests, Elise showed up unexpectedly. Congratulations, she said with a faint smile, handing me a red envelope. Elise had cut her hair short and was wearing a loose t-shirt and jeans, clothes she would have never worn before. I looked at her for a few seconds and suddenly realized that I had long since let go of the past. Thank you. I hope you find your other half soon. I sincerely wished her well. Thank you. She responded. As I turned to greet other guests, I heard her whisper softly. I'll never find someone who treats me as well as you did. At the wedding, I turned my back for a moment. And Emily, holding up her long wedding dress, walked up behind me and patted my shoulder. The moment I saw her, tears uncontrollably spilled from my eyes. What are you crying about? 
She reached out to wipe my tears with the back of her hand. Though her own eyes were filled with tears, Emmy, I held her tightly. You are the best gift heaven has given me, M.M., and you are mine too. She whispered softly in my ear as she hugged me back.